The idea of magnetic retention of plasma was suggested by future Nobel Prize winners Andrei Sakharov and Igor Tam in 1950. Eight years later, the first experimental thermonuclear installation with a magnetic field trap was built in the Kurchatov Institute under the name Tokamak. This word subsequently became an international neologism. Tokamak stands for the toroidal chamber with magnetic coils. It has the shape of a donut, a toroid scientifically speaking, with the coils wound around it to create a magnetic field. This configuration turned out to be perfect for retention of the plasma on the ground. Behind me is a T-10 installation. Frankly speaking, the tokamak itself cannot be properly seen due to the abundance of various wires, light guides and diagnostic systems required to determine parameters of the plasma and perform modern topical research in the field of the plasma physics. As of the moment of its construction, this tokamak was one of the largest in the world. Currently, this is a medium-sized machine, which, however, remains modern and allows us to move towards the controlled thermonuclear fusion. Regardless of the fact that the T-10 tokamak is a massive structure with a height of almost two stories, it can be called a full-scale thermonuclear reactor. This is still an experimental installation, albeit with a relatively complicated principle of operation. Let's consider the main processes that take place here for the achievement of the thermonuclear reaction. First of all, we need a toroidal magnetic field, which is created by the current passing over these coils in order to hold the plasma in the toroidal shape configuration. We also need additional controlling field to maintain stability of the plasma cord. After that, it is necessary, first of all, to create a vacuum in the installation and then supply the working gas. In our case, it will be the mixture of deuterium and tritium. Well, and the moment of truth is about to happen. We've just observed a replica of the thermonuclear reaction.